Hi guys, welcome to Love It Yoga Coaching, where we utilize thoughts, <laughs> some powerful techniques for asking ourselves powerful questions combined with asana, pranayama, and meditation to master our own lives and create our own destinies. Um, tonight I am coming at you live, Cloud Sanctuary here in Siem Reap, and I wanted to share with you, overcome your overwhelm. Um, I had attempted to post this twice previously, and all of my sound um, equipment got a little botched, so there was zero sound, so you just saw me sitting and dancing around, acting a fool. And so this is my redo, do over. Something doesn't work for you the first time, try, try again. So tonight we are going through the top three ways to create calm amidst the chaos of your mind. So without further ado, the top three ways to that I have used throughout my practice, my journey into self-awareness, my, my consciousness journey, my spiritual path, um, have come from other coaches. So the first two come from Marie Forleo, who is a Jersey girl, who's one of my favorite uh, life coaches, and I'm also a Jersey girl, so that's why the, the synergy there. Uh, the second one's from Byron Katie, who is just prolific in the way that she helps people to overcome um, major blockages in their lives. She was a coach who found herself once uh, committed to an institution for mental health and was rendered catatonic for months at a time and used these tools to actually get back to living her life. Her work is called The Work which many coaches work is called the work today. And the third one is a little trickety do that I like to do. And we'll get to that in a bit. But I wanted to share with you first that I am a conscious creation coach. And that means that I work with people one on one um, to utilize the tools that they already have to Find the resources that you already have within you to help you achieve the goals that you set out to wanting to achieve. So typically, um, there's two different ways, or actually there's three different ways along the process of your spiritual awakening, your journey in life, your path to living your fullest potential. I know it's really cliched, but if you're not living your life following your dreams, following your passion, if you're not waking up every morning just with this overwhelming feeling of, I fucking love my life, I love what is happening, I love what I'm doing, I love everything around me, then you can get there. And it's one of my missions to ensure that you are empowered to do so. So live your best life. Yeah, we all know the hashtag, right? But it's really about... If you're not good with where you are, then something needs to shift, something needs to change, and that's what we help you with. So as a holistic coach, um, I either take people from, there's a, there's a timeline, right? Or a, a pathway, uh, or a roadmap, let's call it, as my coach Beverly Sartain calls it, a roadmap to your best self, your highest self. And it could either be taking you from suffering into a space of healing, okay? So if you're suffering from something and you wanna heal that thing so that it's not, it's no longer a massive trigger for you so that the, when this thing happens, it doesn't just knock you off your feet, send you spiraling into this deep pit of depression, um, which has happened to me many times throughout my life. And so I know very distinctly what that is like and how you can utilize these tools to get yourself out of it. Um, or you can go from healing to a space of surviving, right? You're, you're, and maybe surviving for you comes in between suffering and healing or between healing and thriving. 
Um, so th there's a lot to be said for being in a space of surviving to acknowledge I'm surviving this. I'm doing fine. I'm not in bliss, but I'm surviving. I'm not dying. I don't want to kill myself. And that may sound extreme to some of you, but it's a very, very strong reality for a lot of people. And the other part of that, that spectrum or that pathway is going from a space of either healing or surviving into thriving, which is everything is all good. I'm rocking out. Things are coming at me and I can handle them. I'm choosing what I want to put my energy into. And then I'm making magic happen, basically. And then there's one more aspect that people don't always think about. And that's when you move from thriving into just pure flow state, right? You're not just doing awesome. Everything's great. I'm making the right decisions for myself time and time again. I keep, you know, choosing the surroundings and the actions and the thoughts that I want in my life. But I'm also, I don't even have to think about that stuff anymore. So the whole process of coaching, wherever you are on the spectrum, just like along your yoga journey, wherever you are, I meet you exactly where you are. So it doesn't matter where you are, right? A lot of people think that, oh, I, I'm not suffering with anything. You know, I, I'm not getting triggered by anything. So there's no need for me to work with a coach. Well, if wherever you are along that journey, if you're in a state where you're thriving, I have no triggers. I'm fully healed from all of my trauma. I feel awesome, but I'm still having to choose between, okay, what's this thing? What's the very best thing for me? And sometimes you might get stuck in your head on, is this the better thing? Or am I just like sabotaging all the achievements that I've made and I want to move forward with this? So if you have this kind of split brain thing going on, even though I'm physically completely healthy, right? Holistic coaching works with mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual health. So if you feel like you're thriving in all of those areas, and yet you still want to do more, earn more, create more magic in the world, then that's what a coach can help launch you into as well. Because what I'm about to share with you tonight, this top three techniques for transforming, really, chaos into calm, to overcome the overwhelm of your mind, this is a tool, right? And we all have, you have, I believe you have unlimited resources and tools at your disposal that you can call upon at any time. I have zero doubt that you already have everything that you need at all times. And if you are not putting those tools into place in your daily life and using them to access the universal collective energy that is available to you for you to live in pure flow and pure bliss, then that's what I'm here to do. That's what I'm here to help you with. Okay, these are just tools. What I'm about to give you is not actually coaching. There will be some powerful questions and that part of it is coaching. However, this is not coaching, right? Instagram people that you follow are not, they're not coaching you. I mean, sure, there, there are coaches, there are therapists, there are everything, but you know, Facebook, Instagram, these are not actual coaching. What is actually coaching is breaking it down for yourself, choosing which of the tools that you already have, that you already know you are going to use, you're going to put into action, how you're going to get there, what steps you're going to take, and it's doing it within a structured container over a set period of time so that I ensure that you reach your goals because it is... It is not that I hold you accountable because that is also completely up to you, but we def we define what is accountability to you? How are you gonna reward yourself? How are you going to celebrate these wins that you have? Who and what is going to help you get there, right? These are coaching questions. So this is the type of thing that, I just wanted to make that distinction between coaching and tools, right? What I like to call self-love tools because all of this, is a way to love yourself more deeply that will bring you to this like, ah, yes, that's exactly what I needed because these are the types of things that my clients say to me all the time. Oh my God, how did you know? That's exactly what I needed. So if you want to feel that way with yoga meditation, using the, the science, it is a literal science of the physical body, Ayurveda, then Ask me about 365 days access to my Restore and Love Yourself with Beth private Facebook group, um, which has so many classes I can't even talk about them all right now. So 
<laughs> send me a message. You'll have accountability. It'll be freaking awesome. And then you will take with you worksheets, actual videos you have to keep with you for the whole year so you can come back to. Oh, maybe today I, don't, I feel like I'm in more of my vata energy and I want to freaking ground myself because I'm too up in the air. Great. You'll have a practice for that. You can just do it. It'll be there for you the whole time. Today, I'm feeling so stuck. I'm feeling so grounded in my kapha energy that I just need to like, get up and get moving. Great. You will have a pita inducing activating sequence for you to rely on anytime you want to access it. It'll be in the group ready there for you. Or say you're like, I am exhausted. I am burning up all of my fire energy. So we'll have a pita calming sequence for you as well so that you can cool the hurt down and start to assess what's really important in my life for me, right? I don't need to achieve every single thing every five minutes or, you know, I don't have to have 15 billion goals and I need to achieve them all today in the next hour, whatever, five minutes yesterday, you know? You know what I'm talking about, pizzas out there, so. Okay, so that is what I'm offering for you if you want to reach out to me and get that. On to the three, top three techniques to induce calm over the chaos of your mind. So number one, this is Marie Forleo's task. It's a brain dump and chunk. So you take your, all of your wild and crazy thoughts, right? You set a timer, three minutes, and you jot them all down. You write everything out that is on your mind. Dump, 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 dump. Doesn't matter what it is. Don't judge yourself. Don't think about it. Just write it all out. Three minutes. Go write everything out. <clears throat> if you can't get everything out of your mind in three minutes, fine. Keep going, right? Get it all out because it's not doing you any good up in here, right? This is the part of coaching that's taking action on the things that are in your mind. It's not doing you any good in this air ether space. All these thoughts. Oh, should I do this? Should I do that? Uh, this makes me feel bad. Oh, I'm thinking about the past. Oh, I'm worried about the, I'm anxious about the future. Uh, da, 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 da. We don't need any of that. Get it down on a hard piece of paper. Write it out. The actual physical act of writing down is a kinesthetic anchor that will allow energy to come out of your freaking brain, out of spirit, and onto the page, right? Then you can light that fucker on fire if you want to. But we're doing this exercise, so don't let it on fire just yet. You can when, when you want to. Um, but hold up. Wait a minute. Don't go there because I ain't with it. Hi! So you have all of your things written out, right? Then you do the chunk. The chunk! Like from... Um, the Goonies, chunk. So then you chunk them all together, right? You take all of the things that are similar, right? Just like we do, yoga teachers out there, you do similar things. You do simpler and similar. So we're going to simplify what we already have written out on the paper, and we're going to chunk them into similar things. So if you found yourself like writing extensively about one topic and then you skip to another thing and wrote more about that and then you skip to another thing and you were like, wait a minute, that's just like the other thing. So like... You know, um, you know, I'll just give you my personal example. Like, I'm thinking about, like, oh, my dad yelled at me. It was so terrible. And he used to do that when I was little. And this other person yelled at me. You can go, like, oh, yelling, yelling at me. There's a thing. I'm going to put that together, right? Like, that's an experience that I have. And my relationship with that experience is what's keeping me oh, down, down, down. So I don't want that. So. You chunk all the things together. You make them as, as chunky as possible, right? As many chunks as you can get in there. Group these mofos. Group them. Put them all together. And then when you get the chunks all together, look at that list. And then just assess how you feel right then and there, right? You don't have this massive thing. You can even color code it, right? Use some markers. Be like, ooh, you know, hot pink is for this really shitty one that I hate all this stuff. It's about, like, my ex and how much I hated him and, other, and I can't get out of my mind. And he hurt me and da, 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 all this stuff. He or she or they, whatever. So you have those things all together. Then just look at it. Just be like, wow, I had this massive list that seems so overwhelming, and now I have it in chunks, right? Just see how that feels. If it doesn't feel any better, fine, keep moving on. But just if it does feel better, acknowledge yourself. Give yourself that credit of, wow, this feels a little bit better that I have this. This feels a little bit more manageable. That's great. That's cool. This is what all this is about, right? This is, there's no tricks to this. This is just, well, it's actually like tricking your brain. But it's not like, I'm not trying to trick you. <clears throat> I'm trying to trick your brain into working for you instead of against you. Right? So now we have all these chunks. We got all these chunks of things. Then you look at them and you take a big black marker, right? Big black marker. 
and you look over your chunks and you see which ones actually do I have any control over? <laughs> right? And the things that you have absolutely no control over, like say it's like, oh, this person thinks this way about me. Do I have any control over that? No. Black marker it out. And if you're like me, <laughs> if you're on this this part of the process and you want to take a freaking picture of the thing because you don't want to cross it out yet, you don't want to let go of it yet, fine, take a picture. It'll last longer, like Pee Wee Herman says in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Right? Take a picture, it'll last longer. And then cross that ish the F out. Cross it out. Big black strokes. I can't fucking do anything about that. The way other people think about you, what your boss said to you, uh, what your schedule's like at work, like all this stuff. You have no effing control over it, so get it off your list and out of your mind. And then, once you can honestly look at that list and say to yourself, this stuff actually is what I have control over, then you have a much smaller list, hopefully, than what you started with, with this massive brain dump, right? So you got everything out, <clears throat> anchored. Oh dang. I don't know why the light went out, but let me see if I can turn it back on. Oh, everything is just breaking. Oh well. Sorry about that. All my stuff is breaking. So now we got everything out of the out of the brain and you have a smaller list, right? And then again, sit back and say, do I feel any better? Hmm, maybe I do. Maybe this massive, overwhelming list doesn't feel so massive and overwhelming anymore. Maybe it feels a little bit better. Cool. I'm getting a little bit closer to calm. That's great. It felt like chaos before, and now it's calmer. If not, no problem. <clears throat> Hang on to all that chaos, <laughs> as if you wouldn't, as Byron Katie says, and then we'll move into Byron Katie's The Work. So now you've got a smaller list. Byron Katie's The Work is, you take the statement that you wrote down, you know, I hate my dad, I hate my mom, whatever it is. <clears throat> you ask yourself, is that true? Or you make it into a statement that's something that you need to do or you need to get, right? So say it's like, I need more money. That's one of her most famous ones in all the, the live um, lives that she does. Like massive auditoriums. I mean, she's prolific. She has, she's freaking awesome. Check her out. Her website has has the work for you. So if you forget about it, you can go back to her website and just look up the work, or come back to this video. <laughs> um, so then you take a, that question: Is that true? Right? I need more money. Is that true? Yes or no? It's all good, no matter what the answer is. It doesn't really matter. And you don't have to spend hours and hours thinking, oh, is that really true? Well, sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not. Just go with your gut, answer it, get the answer down, <clears throat> and then ask yourself, is that really true? So if I say first, do I need more money? I need more money. Is that true? Yes, absolutely it's true. I need more money. Okay, right now, in this moment, do I need more money? Can I absolutely 100% believe that that is true? Well, do I really need more money right now in this very moment? This very moment, do I have anything I need to pay for? You know, my belly's full or, you know, I have a roof over my head. I don't have any, like, bills to pay in this moment. And there's no bill collectors calling me on the phone. I'm good. So, okay. So maybe that's not true. And just, again, notice, is there a little bit of space that you just created in your mind? Or is it still just as powerfully still there? Yes or no? It's up to you. Whatever. Right? Then the next question is, how do I feel when I think that thought? I need more money. How do I feel? What are the feelings that come up? I feel scarcity. I feel like I'm a victim. I feel worthless. Like I don't, I'm not good enough. I don't earn enough. I didn't do, make the right decisions. I didn't go to the right college. All these thoughts that come up, right? Do we want to be thinking down that, down that path? Right? So how do I feel when I think that thought? All these negative emotions come up. All these negative thoughts. Okay, then part B to that, I added this to Byron Katie's work, is then you ask yourself, do I want to feel that way? Yes or no? See, really simple questions. They're kind of like distracting your mind, right? So then you're not really stuck in this like, oh my God, I have no money, and then it spirals. This is what your brain does to try to protect you. It spirals into this um, need to come to, the, come to the front lines and fight off all the bill collectors or whatever. So you have 
this this idea and then I don't want to feel this way. I don't want to feel like I'm a victim and I ha I've never done enough with my life and I don't have enough education. I didn't get the right job. Da, da, da. I don't want to feel that way. Cool. So now you know you don't want to feel that way. Great. So what I would add to that is how do you want to feel? <clears throat> how do I want to feel? So this is a coaching question. Instead of feeling this shitty way that I feel about this thought that I have, how do I want to feel? Right? So then you can use Byron Katie's work, the next part of it. It's um, after how do I feel when I think that thought is can I, uh, where would I be without that thought? Where would I be without that thought? If I didn't always think to myself, you know, I'm broke, I got no money, where would I be? I would be probably free to make some more money somewhere else. You know, if I'm not thinking that thought constantly, I'm free to do a lot of stuff, <laughs> right? Most people's reaction to where would I be without that thought is wherever I wanted, because it wouldn't be holding me down. I wouldn't be trapped in this chaos of my mind, right? So awesome. Do you want to be there? This is a coaching question that I added to Byron Katie's work. Do you want to be there or do you want to be in the space that having that thought brings you? Up to you, no right or wrong, where do you want to be, right? And then if you want the feelings and the sensations and the thoughts and the emotions associated with not that thought, then you got to train or rewire your brain to think the not that thoughts, to think the thoughts that you want to have about the thing that you actually do want. So then if, we, if I say, okay, then what do you want? And you still feel overwhelmed. And you're like, I don't know what I want. Man, this is so hard. I can't do this. I'm all depressed and I don't have any, I'm broken. I'm any. If your brain still goes back to that, because it probably will. This takes practice, you know? So then if you can go back to that, okay, where do I actually want to be? Go back to that thought you were having, because you ain't going to forget it that fast. Trust me. You know, Byron Katie joked about it. She's like, hold on to that thought, as if you wouldn't. Because you're going to hold on to it. You've been holding on to it forever. You're, like, obsessed with that thought. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm broke. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money. You, like, walk around with it like it's a badge of honor, right? Like, yeah, I don't have enough money. I'm poor. I'm, like, I'm a loser. I don't have the best, the most high-paying job ever. It's like, all right, you want that? Or you want to reverse it right? What's the opposite? What's the reverse of that thought? And then let's exponentiate on top of that reverse thought. So what's the opposite of, I need more money? Simple one, I don't need more money, right? And you're doing this with your own thought, right? This whole time, you can watch this this one time and do the money thing, but then you want you to put your own thought into it when you do this later. What's the reverse? Okay, so then you, you give one reverse. I don't need any more money. Okay, what? how else could you reverse it? Put the thing down, but but I'm reverse it. I love Missy Elliott. Okay, so you take a different aspect, right? You use your creative mind because you are infinitely creative. You are an, a, like a microcosm of all of the information, all of the knowledge, all of the wisdom in the entire universe. So you can get a little creative with your words. You know, one of the love languages, words of affirmation. Use your words and try to find another flip, another reverse. So how about, I have all the money I could possibly ever need. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up, Beth. That was crazy. That was super intense. What are you talking about? That's nuts. It's not crazy. You got to say these things and they got to be outside of what you think is currently possible so that you can get to this realm of possibility that is mind blowing, right? So say the craziest thing you could ever possibly imagine. I am a bajillionaire. What? Shut the, you lying, you lying, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to say it and try it on and see how it feels or else you're certainly never going to get there, right? If you don't even say it one time, how are you ever going to expect to get there? How? If you can't even say it out loud, come on, no? <laughs> so try it on. Try out some crazy things. I made $200,000 this year. That's some bullshit. I didn't, but... I'm I'm not faking it. I'm just trying it on, right? Like you go to the store and you try on some clothes, try on some jeans. You know, does that fit? Oh, there's a little bit of stretch. There. There's a little bit of give. Cool. Where can I get into that stretchiness, that little give part, and be like, mm, 
I can see how that could work. I could rock this if I just like, you know, suck it up a little bit more. Ooh, I could fit in that. I could button that button if I just squeeze a little bit more. Maybe I'll stop eating, you know, croissants at 12 p.m. I mean, 12 a.m. at night. <laughs> you know, maybe I won't have that vegan <laughs> coconut ice cream right before bed. Ah, whatever. So see how these start to change the way that we are thinking about it? You get a little playful with it. It's like teasing your mind space. Tease yourself. It doesn't have to be so freaking serious all the time, right? Yeah. And if you broke, own it, right? I'm broke. I'm broke. There used to be this woman in the New York City subways. It ain't no joke for real. I'm broke. And she had a, a bucket. I have a bunch of buckets here. And she just hit it. Broom. Gotta work. Broom. Gotta eat. It ain't no joke for real. I'm broke. And she'd be like, give me some money, y'all. So that's just a little antidote there. Anecdote. Antidote and anecdote. Why not? Right? So we got that. Keep flipping them around and then see how you feel when you think those thoughts. How do I feel when I say, I, I am a millionaire? You know, maybe it doesn't feel like it's in your reality right now, but it gives you somewhere to go, right? When we try on discomfort, it's just like when we try a new yoga pose. Ever done Baraj Vajrasana? I'll show you what it is. Sage pose, right? You sit like this, you're kind of side saddle straddle. You take one of your feet and you put it up on the top of your opposite thigh. Your other foot is back behind you. It's nice if you're up on cushions. I am. You can put a cushion under your lower knee, put a cushion under your top knee, wherever you want to cushion yourself. Add some more support. Add some more cushions. Get all propped up. You can even use a strap. I don't have one right now handy, but you put a strap around your foot. Take the opposite arm and reach it around. Try to reach as far as you can around the other side of your um, the other side of your side, the other side of your body, and then take the other arm. I'm all wrapped up like a pretzel now, right? Ever do this before? Maybe not. Probably not. You don't even need the strap. Just have your hand keep reaching for that outer hip. Other hand, the back side of the palm goes against the thigh, and then you're revolving, right? You're using that pressure of your hand straight arm to revolve the, the side of your rib that's closest to the foot that's on top of your thigh around. So you're opening up your chest to the side. So you're opening up your heart space to let in more love, self-love. And then you take your head and you twist it the other way. So you look over that shoulder of the crossed over arm and you gaze kind of down a little bit down, like the tip of your nose is over the, the big toe that's up on your thigh. And you just breathe here. Take a deep inhale. Low belly first. It ain't no swimsuit competition. Let it come into the belly, into the ribs, into the chest. Let the breath come all the way up to the top, very top of the head. And then it's going to leave the same way it came in. Belly first. <sighs> Exhale through the nose. Ribs cinch down. Chest sinks a little bit. Shoulders fall down your back. Ah, oh, and you just let that neck hang. This feels really good on the side muscles of your neck, that SEM, sternocleidal mastoid, right? And just breathe here. Ah, oh, try something new. What's that feel like? I ain't never done that before. I also ain't never said I'm a bajillionaire before and meant it. What's that feel like? This is embodiment, peoples. This is how we work with the body to embody thoughts that we have. This is a new thing. Try something new, it might work. At least it will shift your perspective into thinking a different way. Don't forget to do the other side. Or if you forget, who cares? See how you feel tomorrow after you've tried it, right? I'm just gonna switch my legs and sit the opposite way while I talk to you about the third and final way. What was it? I can't even remember what it was right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was Byron Katie, it was Marie Forleo, and then, oh, I have it in my big book and I didn't even bring it with me. All right, I'm just gonna meditate here for a second. Just breathe with me while I try to think about what the third, the third way to overcome your overwhelm was. Oh yeah, I got it. It was a Kundalini breathwork pranayama. 
Notice how I didn't say, oh, I can't remember it. I didn't focus on the, the not, right, the negative aspect. I didn't say to myself, oh, I can't remember it. I can't remember it at all. Why, why can't I remember it? I'm such a dummy, da, 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 all that stuff. You know, that's just bringing you into the non-memory. Instead, I remembered where I wrote it down. I wrote it in that big journal that I have that I left downstairs. Okay, when did I write it? When did I give that speech? When was I talking about it? Okay, and then it just like came to me because when you connect the positives, things will positively emerge, right? So go on ahead with your other side, Baraj Vajasana. But we're gonna have to release this in a moment because we're gonna do a Kundalini exercise that my beautiful friend, Luis, taught me. She is my Kundalini teacher down in Kep at Wahe Bild Wisdom. It's cutting out the stuff that you don't want. So whatever, give up on the Baraj Vajasana, sage pose, spread your legs wide. <laughs> Get your belly all tucked in, hands together. Left over right thumb. One of these screens might be opposite from me, but that's okay. Inhale, lift your arms up, and then you're going to turn to each side and exhale down. Inhale back up, exhale down. And what you're doing is you're visualizing all that stuff that is driving you batty in your mind. So if you went through the chunk, the chunk and, and what was it? The dump and chunk. You went through the work. You got yourself all figured out and you're like still, no, man, I still got no money. It ain't cool. Then you take all those visuals of your poor broke ass and you let them come into your space. You let all of the terrible, horrible things come up and you visualize it. If you want to close your eyes, you can close your eyes and visualize all that stuff and you just cut it. Cut it out. <sighs> Do it 33 times. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. Fast as you can. So fast that you get so caught up in your breath that you don't even think about all the things. You can't even picture them anymore because you're cutting them out. Get away from me. I don't need you. You're out of here. Negative thoughts, limiting beliefs, bullshit, not true, not true. Get out. Out my life. Out my face. Out my breath. Out my body. Out my mind. Out my emotions. Out my spirit. Go. 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 I don't know how many we did. Keep going for a little while longer. If you have been counting, you're awesome. One, two, three, three. Remember, inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. Keep twisting. You're also like twisting. You're wringing out all that BS with your internal fire, your solar plexus, <coughs> your swadhisthana, your sacral chakra. You're getting it all activated. Your sits bones are down, grounded in the in the earth. You're rooting. <laughs> all you Aussies know what that means to you. And then stop. Relax. Crisscross applesauce, sukhasana pose. Sit here, accept it, see how you feel, close your eyes. Look between your eyebrows, your third eye space, your ajna chakra. Allow your breath to flow however it does. What does it feel like in your body? If there's still some stuff there, it's all good. Let it be there. Notice how it makes you feel. And if you want that feeling, you can do the work in your mind over and over again. You can do this breathing exercise as many times as you want. You can get into Brajvajasana whenever you want to. All good, right? One last thing, one last breath work. If there's still a bunch of stuff there, a really fun one. It's not super advised for pita, high pita dosha dominant um, folks, but if you do have high pita energy and you have all the stuff that you just can't seem to get out of your mind, it's all good, right? Because typically, Pizzas will be super exhausted. So you'll be like, you're running these things through your mind and you're also working your body to the bone and you're not drinking enough water because you're burning it off with all of your fire. So get into a space where you can release that stuff. And here's a great breath work for that. It's literally breath of fire or um, hero pose. So you get into kneeling. And again, it's not recommended for pizza to do this every day but it ain't gonna hurt you 
<laughs> it's not bad. It just kind of activates your fire. And if you have a lot of fire and you feel like you're exhausted, then you don't really need to activate that fire, right? You need to more relax, calm down. Actually for pizzas, if you're still feeling super overwhelmed and like exhausted, then do shitali breath, which is just simply close the, curl the tongue and breathe in and out through the tongue. So if you know your pizza or if just fire resonates with you a lot and you feel exhausted a lot, like you have no more gas to give, then do that while we're, we're the rest of us are doing this. So vata, kaphas, do this. Inhale, palms on the thighs, pull them back. Fill up the chest, make it really broad. And then when you exhale, stare up towards the top of your head as you open your eyes super wide and you're going to stick out your tongue, breath of fire, as you press your hands down your thighs. Hiss like a freaking dragon, like a like a gargoyle, like a like a lion. Inhale, pull back through the nose and exhale through the mouth. Again. <laughs> it's like really. <laughs> but it's good if you cough. It's good if you choke on your own saliva because then you're getting out of your mind, right? Three more times. You can restrict the back of your throat, right? Ujjayi, that, that Jalandar Banda restriction, except you're really sticking your head out, so it's kind of doing the opposite. <sighs> Last one. You're going to breathe fire into all of the things that are driving you crazy. <sighs> scary faces, scary faces. Ah, I got out of my life. I'm scaring you away. You know, this is why they have all these, like, crazy scary monster faces and all of the gods uh, that actually protect you in Indonesian culture because, you know, they scare away the demons. You got to get that shit out. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. Please leave me a message, comment below the video if this helped you, if you liked it, if you think I'm crazy, like whatever you want to say, please, like join the convo here. Talk to me now. Talk to me. And if you want, because what's going to be really cool in this session is that you're going to find out like, oh, I always, like for pizza, I always exhaust myself. I'm always like trying to achieve and trying to beat everybody. I'm super competitive. And it makes so much sense that I should like let myself swim in pools more or like eat some cucumber and melon. Like it just, it's like, oh, that's so easy. It's such an easy way to love myself. I can just do that. No problem. And I actually like that about me. I like swimming. I like eating cucumbers. So like, I'm just going to do it. It's going to be so easy. And that's all I'm trying to help you with. <laughs> like, it's super easy to like you and to love you. So do it. And if you don't do it, it's okay. Forgive yourself. And that's what I'm here for, right? I'm here to help you consciously create the future that you want through coaching. I'm Beth, your holistic conscious creation coach with Love It Yoga. Um, trying to help you find more ways that you already know to get into your body, out of your mind, into your heart, into your spirit, because you are divine. You are a mirror of all of the guides and angels and God, goddess, everything that is out there is within you. So there's absolutely no reason not to like, love, and be obsessed with and worship yourself. So I hope this helped you perhaps overcome a little bit of your overwhelm if you suffer from that. And um, I really hope you'll join me on Valentine's Day because I want to be your Valentine. I'm going to be my own. So I want you to be your own too so we can all love ourselves so much that the love just like explodes like a volcano out of us into the entire universe. Because the more that we love ourselves, the more that we have a full cup. I don't have any cups around here. I just have a jar of flowers. <laughs> the more that we have our full cup of flowers, the more we can <laughs> spread them around like love. <laughs> I got all the, these like fall from the trees here. It's insane. So um, 
yeah, the more flowers that we have in our hearts, the more we can give them to everyone else. So I'm so full of love. I want to share even more love with all of you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. I love you to bits, but it is way, way, way more important that you love you to bits. So if you still don't know how to do that, if you would love to hear more things like the, the top three top tips to overcome your overwhelm that I just shared with you, please join me on Valentine's Day. We can all be our own Valentines and love ourselves the way that we deserve. Wrap those arms around yourself and give yourself a big self-love hug. Kiss yourself. I'm kissing the mic. Kiss yourself, fool. Thank you so much for watching again, and I will see you guys soon. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. But you gotta love you. You gotta love you. You. You, 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 you. Thank you so much for watching. What's up, half dog? Oh, Christian, hell. Thank you. Bye. I love you.